After repairing the world's most complicated robotic toy for children, I decided to take a break by fixing this lamp. So first let's just try to figure out what, oh, there's a bent prong. Okay, it does not work. Oh, that's tight. First I'm gonna try to straighten out this prong. Check is the bulb. Next, I'm going to check that the wires aren't broken, and I'm going to do that by using a multimeter set to continuity mode, meaning that if there's an electrical path between these two probes, I'll get a beep. If there's no beep, then there's a break in the wire. All right, it's something about the hot. I kind of see the crimp in there. Looks fine. The plug looks fine, so it's time to go in. It's a ballast in it. All right, so it's fine coming into this junction, and then it goes into the ballast and out on this red wire, and nothing comes back. So it's something inside the ballast, but honestly, as long as you use an LED, you don't need a ballast. So to elaborate a little more, the purpose of the ballast is to be able to light fluorescent bulbs. But most compact fluorescent bulbs have a built-in ballast in each of the bulbs. So I'm really not sure why this is in this lamp, or for how long this would have been useful before it became obsolete but I'm still gonna try to repair it. So the most likely failure point would be the integrated circuits on this board. And there are two on the board, but one of them is buried in epoxy as a way to keep the design of that chip proprietary. Uh, the other integrated circuit is the TRIAC, and this is the device that acts as a switch to, to allow electricity to flow in either direction. So I'll go ahead and start by replacing the triac since I have this component on hand. And now for the test. No luck. So I'm just going to make this easy on myself and solder in a wire across the input and output terminals of the ballast to bypass the entire board. And for the second attempt. Okay, putting it back together. Good as new.